This presentation covers the time behavior of resistor capacitor circuits. So let's start by imagining a single loop circuit that contains both a resistor and a capacitor along with an EMF source. We've looked at the behavior of circuits that have just resistors and just capacitors. And we know that capacitors don't charge instantaneously. The charge and the potential difference across them builds up over time. So we want to investigate that time behavior and see how it happens. We'll start with the switch open and the capacitor initially uncharged. So Q is zero and delta V across the capacitor is also zero. When the switch is closed, current will flow and build up, charge will build up in the capacitor. As the electric field inside the capacitor and the potential difference across it both increase, this makes it increasingly more difficult for additional charge to be added to the capacitor. This means that as the charge increases, the current outside of the capacitor should decrease. So will these increases and decreases be linear or curve functions? What are the initial values and the final limits for these different variables? And what happens to the delta V across the resistor as these are charging? Pause the movie here for a few seconds and think about what graphs like these would look like. We know that the rate at which charge can be added to the capacitor is going to be inverse with the amount of charge already in the capacitor. This is because the electric field inside is getting stronger over time. When rates are proportional to values, we usually end up with an exponential type function. So it seems reasonable to believe that the charge and the delta V across the capacitor would be approaching an asymptote from below and that the current outside of the capacitor would be approaching an asymptote of zero from an initial value. So here are the limits and the initial values. At t equals zero, delta v across the capacitor and the charge in the capacitor are both zero. Since delta v across the capacitor is zero, the entire voltage of the battery has to be dropped across the resistor. So we know delta v r is equal to the EMF of the battery and therefore the current in the circuit would be E over R. However, as time um, goes on, we know the current has to go to zero. This means that the delta V across the resistor also approaches zero, because after all, delta V across the resistor is the product of I and R. If delta V across the resistor is zero, the loop rule says that delta V across the capacitor must be approaching the EMF of the battery. To build a mathematical model, we'll start with the loop rule. We know the loop rule is always true because after all it is just conservation of energy expressed in a different way. The, delta, uh, the loop rule therefore must be true at all times, not just at fixed times like the beginning or the end. So if we apply the loop rule to our circuit, our positive voltage will be the EMF across the battery and then we'll have decreasing potential differences of IR across the resistor and Q over C across the capacitor. So that gives us the first equation you see on the slide. We rearrange things and then we add in the fact that the current through the circuit would be dQ dt. We can multiply both sides by the capacitance and on the right hand side we'll then have C times the EMF of the battery and we know that that's just equal to the maximum charge that the capacitor can hold. We do some more manipulation to separate the variables and then integrate both sides. So we're integrating to an arbitrary time T and to our charge at that particular time. The integral you see on the left 
needs to be solved by u substitution. And when you do a u substitution, you end up with the natural log of q max minus q prime. And then we integrate or evaluate from zero to q, giving us the last expression you see on the page. A little more rearranging, and we end up with the q function shown at the bottom of this slide. So our maximum value is CE as we expected. And we have a function which is approaching an asymptote of CE from below in an exponential manner. Now this gives us only one expression for one of the variables that we're interested in the circuit. So how would we come up with expressions for things like the current, the delta V across the capacitor, and the delta V across the resistor? Pause the movie here for a few seconds or a few minutes and try and figure out what these expressions would be. We can use the definition of current as dq dt and differentiate the previous expression for q and we'll have an expression for the current in the circuit. And you can see that this is definitely a decaying exponential function approaching an asymptote of zero from an initial value of e over r both things that we expected from our earlier analysis. We can find delta V across the capacitor because it's equal to Q over C. So we substitute the Q function from earlier and we end up with this expression for the delta V of the capacitor. This also does what we expect. It's coming upward from below to an asymptote of the battery's EMF. We know that in resistors the potential difference is the product of the current and the resistance. So I can take my current function from the top of the page, multiply by r, and we can see that this is a decaying exponential function starting at the value of the EMF of the battery and decaying to an asymptote of zero as t approaches infinity. So here is a graph of the reverse exponential function for the charge on the capacitor. How long does it take this capacitor to become fully charged? These functions are exponential, so we know that they never truly reach their asymptote. This is a disagreement between the physical model, which we know the capacitor becomes fully charged, and the mathematical model, which says that it's never really getting there. So instead of trying to solve for the time it takes the capacitor to become fully charged, we use a figure of merit called the time constant. And this time constant is simply the product of R and C. You can see that that's in the denominator of the fraction that's inside the exponential function in all of our answers. It's always e to the negative t over rc. If you look at the units for resistance and capacitance, you'll see that the product of their units simplifies down to seconds. Try to verify that on your own. So when the time is equal to r times c, the charge will be 63% of its maximum. The argument of the exponential function at this particular time will be minus 1. e to the minus 1 is about 0.37, and so 1 minus e to the minus 1 is about 0.63, 63%. Now let's turn our attention to a capacitor that starts out fully charged but is then grounded or shorted through a resistor. This is called discharging. So what are our initial and final conditions in this scenario? So we're starting with the capacitor fully charged, so the charge is at its highest value. Delta V across the capacitor will also be at its highest value and so should the current. All three of those are going to decrease over time. Because the charge is decreasing, we need the current to be negative. 
After all, the current is the derivative of the charge. So when we do the loop rule for this circuit and turn it into a differential equation, we'll need to make a different substitution for I. Instead of dQ dt, like we did in the charging case, we'll use minus dQ dt in the discharging case. I'll leave this as an exercise for you to create the differential equation and solve it. It's also worked out in the chapter in your textbook. So we've looked at simple single loop circuits, but what happens when we have capacitors and resistors in a multi-loop circuit, like the example shown here? We know that when a capacitor gets fully charged, it no longer allows current to flow in the branch where the capacitor is located. The electric field inside repels additional charges that are trying to be moving on to the plates. So over, after a long period of time, a capacitor will act like a break in the circuit or an open switch. No current will flow in that portion of the circuit. We also know that the current flowing in the branch containing the capacitor will be its highest at t equals zero. There is no electric field in the capacitor to prevent current flow so in effect, for just a single instant when the circuit is initially energized, the branch containing the capacitor will act like a short circuit or a wire. So the way that we could ana analyze this circuit is we know that at t equals zero, no current will flow in the 100 ohm branch. Current will flow out of the battery through the 200 ohm resistor but because there is no resistance in the branch containing the capacitor, then in effect, all of the current will flow that way and none of it will flow through the 100 ohm resistor. Now this condition is true only for a single infinitesimal period of time at the initial energization of the circuit. So since no current is flowing in the 100 ohm resistor, in effect, the equivalent resistance of the circuit is just the 200 ohms. So I would know that there's going to be a 5 over 200 amp current flowing out of the battery through the 200 ohm and in the external branch of the capacitor part of the circuit. However, over time, as T approaches infinity, the current will stop flowing in that branch and it will divert instead through the 100 ohm resistor. This means that in effect the equivalent resistance of the circuit has increased to 300 ohms and the current that now flows out of the battery through the 200 ohm through the 100 ohm and back would be 5 over 300. In the 200 ohm resistor the, the current is going to go it's going to start at 5 over 200 and come down to 5 over 300 in an asymptotic manner. In the 100 ohm resistor, it, current is going to start at zero because it's been bypassed by the capacitor branch and it will asymptotically come upwards towards 5 over 300. This is really the best analysis that we can do for this kind of circuit at this point in your math career. There are ways that we can actually use multiple loop and junction rules to create a system of differential equations, which we could model all of the currents simultaneously, but that is a topic for a math class later on.